Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So grateful for you. I see Deb's already in the studio. Good morning, Deb. Beautiful Deb is always here. Thank you so much, my love. Uh, hi, Facebook user. Not sure who this is. Uh, comment and put your name so I know who you are so I can address you properly. Good morning, Khadija. Oh, my love. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. Khadija is talking about the seven day mental diet. So this week we get to read from two books. How lucky are we? Reading is fundamental. <laughs> so uh, yes, welcome to Brand Memento Morning Show, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Faith James. I am the CEO and founder of the Personal Branding Consultancy. And this is my, my love project, my passion project. My mission with the show is inspiring into action any kind of action, big, small, medium, it doesn't matter, as long as we're moving forward. How do we complete the 20,000 mile march? One step at a time. And so as long as we're doing a little something every day, all is well. Good morning, beautiful Melody Dixon, always in the studio with us. Thank you, my love. Hello, Bonita, made it on time today. I love that. Good morning, Bonita. So we're going to be getting into the uh, the six basic fears. This is universal. You know, none of us escape these. We at some point in our life deal with these fears, and we get to learn this morning how to overcome. So my plan is to go through each fear uh, one at a time because I want to reserve some time to walk us through and kick us off the uh, the seven day mental diet, and really so we understand how we're moving through this challenge and give some of the rigor. Good morning, Arvis. Maybe you need to go on the YouTube channel, Arvis, so you can be awesome. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, beautiful. Thank you for joining. All right, so as I like to ask you, if you're so inclined, please share, please tag a woman, a friend. I don't even care if, you know, listen, it's Women's History Month, but we also have men in our lives that we support, so if you know, of uh, a man who is a colleague of yours that is working to build their brand, working to uh, improve their life. This is the week to invite them because every single soul can benefit from the seven day mental diet. This is, that's not for women only, this is for humanity. So feel free to tag and share uh, as you will. So we're reading in, uh, chap it's in chapter 14, how to outwit the six ghosts of fear right? And now we're talking about the first one is the fear of poverty. So let's read. Fear of poverty can be overcome by educating yourself. But didn't I just say reading is fundamental? Yes. By just being aware 
of where you are financially, you can take the first step to financial health. Here are some steps you can take to master your fear of poverty. Number one, set financial goals. Ask a financial advisor for help. So each of us, good morning, beautiful Julia. Thanks for joining us, my love. Each of us at some point in time will exit the planet in our bodily form, right? Obviously our energy will continue. But while we're here, we get to live the good life. And the good life is what it means for you. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the population requires financial means to be able to live that good life. And so your good life could be to uh, start a nonprofit. I know for me, mine is to launch my advantagekids.org, which is a fully funded, fully funded uh, nonprofit tennis foundation for underprivileged and underserved children. So on my manifested wall is a picture of Serena Williams, and she's just an inspiration to me in so many ways, uh, chief of them being she dominates a global industry all by herself, and she started on the, in the concrete jungle, if you will, of Compton, playing on beat up hard courts with her sister Venus and their, and their dad. So, you know, I love to talk about Bloom or Your Planet and having that even though nevertheless, if there is anybody that embodied even though nevertheless, it would be Serena Williams. And so I just love that she came from where she's come from and look at where she is now. So evidence that your beginnings do not, do not, do not determine, dictate, direct your future. So I just love all of that. And so I want to replicate that for other underprivileged, underserved children. It's going to take a lot of money. Did I say it was going to be fully funded? Yes, ma'am. So good morning, Brenda, beautiful, all the way from the ATL. Hello, Amber. Good morning, my love. And of course, I just peeped a little notice Amber just shared. I never have to ask Amber. Be like Amber, please. And thank you. So the majority of us need means, financial means to be able to live the good life, whatever your good life looks like, right? Maybe you want to travel the world and write a blog, whatever it is. So if you have a fear of poverty, you're not going to be in full expansion, fully expanse in, in your thinking and even in your living. You're just going to be miserly and, and hoarding. And that is the antithesis of getting into la joie de vie. You can't be a hoarder and, th you know, if you hold so tight, the money can't come in. So there are things that we can do to release this fear um, that binds and, and bounds us. So fear of poverty, number one way to overcome it is just being aware of where you are. Set financial goals. Do you have a goal to start a nonprofit? Do you have a goal to travel the world? You, what is what is the thing that you want to do that is the expression of your good life and get with a financial advisor who can show you the path to getting there, right? Definitely. Good morning, beautiful Jacqueline Young Landy. Listen, did I tell you like clockwork? <laughs> if these two don't keep me on my toes, I don't know who else keeps me on my toes. Both Jacqueline and Melody were like, um, day 22 challenge, please. Yes. And thank you. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Good morning, beautiful Vivi. And thanks for joining my love. So we set financial goals, right? And nobody's judging your financial goal. It just gets to be set. I want to retire with 10 million. I want to retire with 2 million. I want to retire with a half a million. Whatever your number is, you need to set it, right? Because again, just like the GPS, if you don't put in the destination, the car, the truck, the vehicle, the bike, the bicycle, whatever you're riding can't get you there because there's nothing in the GPS. You know, you could say, oh, wouldn't it be nice? 
Oh, it'd be so nice to retire with $5 million. That's nice. Do you have a plan? Has a financial advisor said, here's what you need to be looking at. Number one, you need to be looking at where you can start to save what you have. This is where some opportunities for investing to bring in extra. You can't just wish your way to 5 million. You have to have a financial plan. Okay. <laughs> I know you got me. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful Pamela. Thanks for joining my love. So number one way to get banish, move out of the fear of poverty is to set a financial goal and work with a financial advisor and get help. How do I set this? What does my retirement look like? Most people don't even know what they're going to need to live the lifestyle to which they have become accustomed in retirement, right? So at some point in time, if you're working for a company, you're going to be retiring from that company. If you're working for yourself, maybe you have a little bit longer uh, leeway, but who says we want to work until we're like, just barely in the ground before we start to travel. Like one of the joys of being the CEO of you is you get to say who, when, where, what, why, and when. So you want to be able to have that conversation with a financial advisor pronto. Make that a, a to-do if you don't already have one. Number two, get a financial education. With more education, you will have less fear. It's just that simple. Reading is fundamental. If you know that the stock market goes up and down and it has corrections and there are moments, you're not going to freak out the minute you see that the Dow is down at 25,000, right? Because you know, oh, the trend has been this. It's just doing a little correction right now. But if you don't know, then everything is new and scary to you, right? It's like I use that analogy before. If you've never been on a plane before, and you've never experienced this thing called turbulence and you didn't read up on it before you got on the plane and all of a sudden the plane's doing this and you're freaking out. You're like, Lord Jesus, take me. And the person next to you is just there steady reading their book, sleep. <laughs> and you're wondering like, why aren't they freaking out? Because they've been educated. They understand what turbulence is. They understand what wake, uh, <laughs> wake is. They understand that they've traveled before. So it's the same thing. Get financial education. More education you have, less fear. Number three, don't rely on someone else for your financial security like a husband or a partner, right? If it's got to be, it's up to me. That's the idea. If it's got to be, it's up to me. If it's got to be, it's up to you. So become self-reliant, become responsible. Don't abdicate your responsibility for your financials to somebody else. Spend less than you earn. Simple. But in order to do that, you have to know how much you earn. And if you have multiple sources of income, I would encourage you to have some sort of a track or some sort of a financial spreadsheet where you list down the column, down each row, all of the different sources of MSIs and then maybe on a monthly basis, okay, how much money did I bring in from, like if I use Melody as an example, my corporate event planning. So for March, okay, in March, this money is in this bucket so far uh, for my, hello, for my Sage Bundles business, how much did I bring in so far, right? For the, um, the dream catchers, how much did I bring in so far for the linens? How much did I bring in so far for just, you know, consult, you know, consultative services? How much did I bring in so far? Total it. So you understand, okay, I have four to, you know, let's say five streams of income. And on average, you know, this is what I'm doing. Very important. Build an emergency fund, build an emergency fund, build an emergency fund. I don't care if you start with five cents. You know, I'm from Jamaica, we say five cents, not a nickel. <laughs> I don't care what you start with, start, get a 
a, a, like an empty vase, a shoe box. It doesn't matter to me, but just intentionally start. So even if you can go, oh, look, I've got $2. As we say in Jamaica, every mickle make a muckle. That means it all adds up, right? It all adds up over time. Uh, start investing, start small and build. Don't let anybody hoodwink you into any get rich quick scheme in the, in the, in the stock market or the foreign exchange danger, danger, Will Roger pay attention and be engaged in your day to day money management. Talk about it with your spouse, your significant other, your cohabitating lover, whomever, whatever, but have rigorous conversations and daily conversations. Remember we established our own holiday, right? We have declared on the show, Fridays are national financial free Friday. We're going to treat it like it's a holiday. We're going to spend time with our money. We're going to act like it's a holiday. We're taking our best friends out for her birthday, um, taking your husband out for dinner, make it a thing with you and your money every Friday. Right. If Diana was here, she would echo it because that's who I got it from. Spend time with your money on Fridays. But in your mind, I want you to, to feel like emotional. Like, oh, it's a holiday. It's National Financial Free Friday. Let me go see what's going on with my money. Let me get an update. I don't care if all you have is two dollars in your bank. You know, the, the worst place to be is in ignorance. How much money did you? Uh, I don't I don't. You're just setting yourself up for disaster. Um, let's see. Number eight, keep an eye on your credit score. Work to get it as high as possible. Jacqueline Young Landy can help you with that if your credit score is looking funny. Uh, don't spend money to make yourself feel good. Spend money to invest in your in your in your business. Like this orchid plant, I consider it an investment because when I do my shows, I want to feel good. My mentor said, surround yourself with opulence. So my orchids for me are my most favorite plant ever, ever. I spend money on my Swarovski surrounding myself with my opulence. So energetically, I'm feeling good. And... Learn from the money mistakes. So which of these can you commit to? If you don't have a financial goal, let's start at number one, please. And you get to pick up the phone and call somebody from your networking group. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Vivian, my love, this is on sale in the Swarovski line, my love. You would, and look, let me, thank you, Vivian. Let me just do a little HSN demo. So it's, it has the slider. So you can make it, you can make it long or you can make it short. So look, if I were not on camera and I wanted to wear it all, right, it goes down. But then because I'm on camera and I want to see my stuff. So I can do it there. I can slide it and, and do that. It's like you've got multiple necklaces in one. Go check out the Bling Your Brand group that I have and you can see it. Okay, so Jacqueline is saying all, first to the line. Love it, love it, love it. Do them all. But if you, if you are like, uh, what? Get a, sit. Find somebody from your networking group. Plenty of financial advisors come to those meetings and say, hey, I want to have, can you point me in the direction of a calculator that you can plug in your age, you know, the year you want to retire, et cetera. And it'll give, it'll put out a suggestion for you in terms of what you really should be targeting. But don't, but don't let getting the right number, because this is where the twins come in, right? Perfectionism and procrastination, they'll come knocking and say, 
Wait, 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 don't be so fast. Are you sure that's the right number? What if it, what if it's like a million and a half? We don't know. What if it's like a million two? What if it's like, well, actually maybe what if it's three? You will be circling the drain forever trying to come up with a perfect number. Just start. Just start. That's right. <laughs> Bling yo brand. Yes, ma'am. Go find the Facebook group if you're not already in. I'm doing a special promo to close out Women's History Month. So go check that out. All right, let's stay focused. So any questions on how to get out of the fear of poverty? Because if you are in a situation where your income got reduced, you were doing a project for a company and they're like, yeah, we can't afford to keep you on anymore because the economy and then that source of income is gone. It's easy. It's easy. Oh, hey, lovey. I was just thinking about you. Um, it's easy to get caught up in the fear, right? But just, but, but, but be okay to just look at the numbers because that's the only place you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. You can't fix what you do not acknowledge. So acknowledge where you are, be okay with it because where you are is where you are and where you are is good because you're already intentional. Just even listening to this, you're already intentional that you're going to do something about it. So if you have multiple sources of income, I encourage you to get a spreadsheet, write it by hand if you have to. So going down on the left side, coming all the way down, all of the different sources of income. So let's use Brenda as a, for example, right? So Brenda has her body butters. Brenda has her bath salts. Brenda has her, uh, her virtual yoga studio, right? And she does privates. And if there's anything else that she adds on, um, some of the other uh, skincare uh, lines, then you do those. She has her Arbonne as well. So that might be like six, six or seven that you would put all six down the row and then across the top, March, April, May, June, July, right? And then you just, how much money are you have you brought in so far in the month of March for your butters? How much money have you brought in for the month of March so far for salts? How much money have you brought in so far for Arbonne? How much money have you brought in so far for yoga, for privates, for anything else that's on there? We get to know, we get to know because if you're saying that your, your brand is about this one thing, so right, we all have multiple sources of income, but there's one thing, you know, I'm always talking about focus and clarity, that if somebody's saying, oh, there goes so-and-so, what is that one thing you want falling out of their mouth, right? If you look at that one thing on that sheet and you don't see the money matching it, you know right away something is off. So it would be like if I were saying, yeah, I definitely want to be known for my branding prowess, that that's where I am, my superpower in, in its highest zone of genius. And I look at my numbers, my tracker, and I see only, let's say only $10,000 for branding. I know something is off. If the, the jewelry, let's just say, is at $20,000. So the thing that you say you're about is not where your actual energy and focus is. So we, we get to be real with ourselves. We get to acknowledge like, you know what? Yeah, there is a shift coming. I actually thought I was going to be focusing more on butters, but I'm really leaning more into the salt. And so that's you, you it's representative in the numbers. Make sense guys. So you just want to be in the awareness of what's going on with your money. It cannot, cannot it does not get to be a black hole that you ignore and pretend. A lot of women have the, uh, oh, I'm not good with numbers. We get to cancel that. We get to cancel all of that nonsense because so many inventions in this world have been done by women. Women have gone into space. Women engineers, women bankers, women bosses, just women. Oh my gosh, did you see that bomber that went over the Super Bowl? The big, huge, like, bat looking one, a chick was flying that shout out captain. I forget her name, right? Fly like a girl. Yeah, she did that. So we don't get to have those excuses. We get to show that we are bigger than the excuse of, Oh, I'm not good with numbers because there are people out there that you can hire who eat numbers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So 
if you don't know how to do a spreadsheet, you can hire it done. We don't get to be smaller than excuses. We get to be overcomers. All right. So let's get into the seven day mental diet. <sighs> let's woosa. <sighs> so for those of you who uh, joined me yesterday, uh, good morning, beautiful Annie. How are you? Thank you for joining. Yes, thank you. So we have no excuses. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Come through with the information, Vivian Hidden Figures. This is the perfect bonus prize for Vivian. You're not good with math? The Hidden Figures women, who, oh, by the way, happen to be women of color, calculated the trajectory to put the man in space. You don't need to read or know anything else. If they've done it, they've shown you it's possible. This is what you get to know, guys. If it's done, if somebody's done something somewhere in the world, doesn't even have to be anybody that you know. Universal law shows you that it's not an impossibility. It's been done. It can be duplicated. Love that. So we wanted to be extra special last week. And we, I'm like, I... <laughs> And came with the notion that we're going to do double duty this week and we're going to jump into the seven day mental diet. Because here's one thing that I know that I have just been in so much more clarity from doing this leadership program is that your mindset and how you see the world and how you move through the world it's predicated upon how you think and how you think is dominated by your subconscious mind. And you get to do the work to clear release at a deep guttural cellular level in this program, all of the junk, the, the, the just stinky stuff that energetically has kept you blocked. So, when you are in a space of everything's a problem, negative, negative, that tells you your blog. That tells you you get to do this work, that you get to get cleared. So if you want to learn more about the leadership program that I'm doing, just type leadership. I have about maybe seven ladies who's already uh, done that, and I'm going to be scheduling uh, a private Zoom session with them so that we can have this conversation because everybody gets to go. Everybody gets to be free. Your subconscious mind rules the day. If your subconscious mind, mind is still dragging around decades, decades of trauma, emotional, psychological, physical, whatever, and you think you're good, like I, you know, pull it together, I'm good, but it's still here. You're still carrying it around. It impacts the way you see the world. The seven day mental diet is a great way to see where you are. And uh, Annie, I got you. Wonderful. Thank you. So I am going to, yes, uh, yes, Bonita. Good morning, Angel. Yes, it is a hardcore program. Thank you for joining me, my love. So let us read. I'm going to share my screen for the benefit of those who uh, are not yet with with the book. I'm going to read the whole thing. I want to just point out a couple few important parts, but definitely read, definitely read it, uh, in your, in your time. Let me make that a bit bigger. Okay. So the subject of the diet is one of foremost, of the present day in public interest. Newspapers, magazines, team with articles on the subject. The counters of the bookshops are filled. Okay, on and on. So he's basically going into and saying, dieting is not a new thing, right? Uh, the most important of all factors in your life is the mental diet on which you live. So I just said this to you. It doesn't matter what else you've got going on if your mind is not right. And hear me when I say this to you, it's not about 
you're trying to will yourself to to be okay. If your subconscious is laden, low, but, but bear down, dragging decades of trauma, hurt, unforgiveness, all of those things, it impacts your everyday. It shows up in your money. It shows up in your relationship. It shows up in your, it shows up everywhere. You can't escape it because wherever you go, there you are. Yes. Let me know if this is landing. The most important of all factors in your life is the mental diet on which you live. It is the food which you furnish to your mind that determines the whole character of your life, the entire thing. It is the thoughts you allow yourself to think, the subjects that you allow your mind to dwell upon. I want somebody to hashtag the word dwell, hashtag dwell. This is the key to understanding how to maneuver through the seven day mental diet. So as thy days, so thy strength be, which in modern language is translated as thy thoughts, so shall thy life be. If you're thinking everybody is against you, everybody is out to get you, to get you, nothing ever goes good for you. There you go again. I knew they were going to do this. That is you dwelling upon the negative. That is you dwelling upon only one perspective of life. You look through life through very dark glasses. You don't know where the rose colored glasses are. You've never seen the rose colored glass in your life. So everything in your life today, the state of your body, listen to me, everybody lean in, whether healthy or sick, the state of your fortune, whether prosperous or impoverished, the state of your home, whether happy or the reverse, the present condition of every phase of your life, in fact, is entirely conditioned by thoughts and feelings which you have entertained in the past by the habitual tone of your past thinking. So important we grab a hold of this. The state of your life, your health, your money, your relationships, your home, what you have in front of you right now, what you are experiencing right now is a direct path correlated to your thoughts and your feelings. So we get to take ownership of our current situation and realize that it's because of how we have been habitually thinking and how we have been habitually feeling. In other words, you choose your life. That is to say, you choose all the conditions of your life. When you choose the thoughts upon which you allow your mind to dwell, thought is the real causative force in life and there is no other. Period, done, end of story. You cannot have one kind of mind and another kind of environment. This means that you cannot change your environment while leaving your mind unchanged. Hello, somebody. What did I just say? Wherever you go, there you are. Oh, these, these people, they're just so, they're problematic. And you're like, it's never you. And so you move and you go get a new group of friends and all of a sudden you, you see six months later, you and five of them not talking because, oh, everybody else is a problem. No, my love, we get to look in the mirror. And it's not about moving to a new neighborhood or changing your, your group of friends. We've got to go inward. This then is the real key to life. If you change your mind, your conditions must change too. Your body must change. Your daily work or other activities must change. Your home must change. The color tone of your whole life must change. Not might change, could change is a possibility. It must, it is compelled to change. For whether you be ha habitually happy or cheerful or low spirited and fearful depends entirely on the quality of the mental food upon which you diet 
yourself. Wow. Please be very clear about this. If you change your mind, your conditions must change too. We are transformed. This is scripture. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. This is why I anchor everything that I am in the word because God already told us this, this is not brand new, right? We act like we just hearing it for the first time. God already told us from day one, but it's okay. We we'll give each other grace. We're hearing it now. This may be called the great cosmic law and its truth is seen to be perfectly obvious when once it is clearly stated in this way. In fact, I don't know of any other person who denies the essential truth. So let's just jump down a little bit. I want to get into moods habitually entertained produce the characteristic disposition of the person concerned. And it is his disposition that finally makes that finally makes or Mars a person's happiness. Mars means to like turn it south, you know, negative. You cannot be healthy. You cannot be happy. You cannot be prosperous if you have a bad disposition. If you got a bad attitude, you have a bad mindset. Everything is just a problem. You, do we do we know anybody? Tell me in the comments. Do we know anybody like that where it doesn't matter what it it could be to you the smallest, littlest thing. And for them, it's like kingdom come. Everything's a problem. Everything's heavy. Have you ever walked into a room or in a situation where you just feel somebody's energy? You're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't feel light and fluffy and, and fun. It's heavy and cantankerous and everything is like, eh, why is it? Why? Oh my gosh, every time you come here, they send out cold food. Listen. We're out having a great time. Guess what? There is a kitchen with a stove back there. All you got to do is just send it back and say, can we get a little, can you increase the temperature, please? Doesn't need to be that big a deal. And you need to see, you get to see how it's impacting. It's not just about, oh, this person always has you know, a bad mood. It's impacting everything. If you are a sulky or surly or cynical or depressed or superior or frightened half out of your wits, your life possi cannot possibly be worth living. Oh, he said that. Wow. Unless you are determined to cultivate a good disposition, you may as well give up all hope of getting anything worthwhile out of life. And it is kinder to tell you very plainly that that is the case. If you are not determined to start in now and carefully select all day the kind of thoughts that you are going to get, you may as well give up hope of shaping your life into this kind of thing that you want it to be because this is the only way. So he's basically saying you can't make up your own ways and rules about it. This is how it gets to be done. In short, if you want to make your life happy and worthwhile, which is what God wishes you to make it, you must begin immediately to train yourself in the habit of thought selection and thought control. Somebody hashtag thought selection, thought control. See, I'm asking you to hashtag these words because these are going to be key ones that I want imprinted in your brain as you go through this process starting today. So thought selection, thought control. This will be exceedingly difficult for the first few days. So let's just act like we know that. But if you persevere, you will find that it will become rapidly easier. And it is actually the most interesting experiment you could possibly make. In fact, this thought control is the most thrilling, interesting hobby anyone could take up. You will be amazed at the interesting things that you will learn about yourself and you will get results almost from the beginning. So let me jump down to how this goes. These are the key things. Okay, here's a prescription. Take notes, screenshot, do whatever you need to do. But here are the key points. The prescription. For seven days, you must not allow yourself to dwell. Here is that word again, dwell. For a single moment on any kind of negative thought. You must watch yourself for a whole week as a cat watches a mouse. 
and you must not under any pretense allow your mind to dwell on any thought that is not positive, constructive, optimistic, kind. This discipline will be so strenuous that you could not maintain it consciously for much more than a week, but I do not ask you to do so. A week will be enough because by the time the habit of positive thinking will begin to be established, some extraordinary changes for the better will have come into your life, encouraging you enormously. And then the future will take care of itself. The new way of life will be so attractive and so much easier than the old way. And you'll find your mentality aligning itself almost automatically. But the seven days are going to be strenuous. Did he say strenuous? Yes, it's going to be strenuous. So just be ready. Just be prepared. It's like I'm saying, hey, you want to go on to like Magic Mountain or you want to go on like the Incredible Hulk ride? Yep, it's a 60 foot drop. You want to still go? <laughs> Let's go, right? He's telling you the 60 foot drop is coming. I would not have you enter upon this without counting the cost. Mere physical fasting, oh jeez, mere physical fasting would be child's play in comparison, even if you have a very good appetite. The most exhausting form of any army gymnastics combined with 30 mile route marches would be mild in comparison with this undertaking. Whoa. But it is the but it's only for a week. So we can we get to do anything for a week, right? And it will definitely alter everything for the better for the rest of your life here for all eternity. In fact, things will be utterly different and inconceivably better than if you had not carried through this undertaking. Don't start it lightly. So you get to decide when you're going to start. I'm just going to be stepping you through the book this week, but he, hear what he's saying. Don't start it lightly. Think about it for a day or two. We've already started thinking about it because we talked about this on Friday. But if you're not ready, like give yourself some grace. Then, And there he says it. Then start in and the grace of God go with you. You may start in any day of the week, any time in the day, first thing in the morning or after breakfast or after lunch. It doesn't matter. But once you start... No, Tressa, this isn't Think and Grow Rich. This we we read that, and now we're into the seven day mental diet by Emmett Fox. Okay, let me catch my space back. So he says you can start it any day. You can start it after lunch. You can start it after dinner. You can start it right before you go to bed. Doesn't matter to him. This is the key, everybody. You've got to go through for seven days. This is essential. The whole idea is to have seven days of unbroken mental discipline. Somebody hashtag unbroken mental discipline. Unbroken mental discipline. In order to get the mind definitely bent in a new direction once and for all. Because think about this. Your brain has been hardwired for decades of a way of thinking. Decades. So it's going to take a bit of work to bend it. You ever, you know, they say that old tree, um, old tree can bend. That's another Jamaican saying. It's like once the tree is already growing and it's like rooted and it's erected, it's hard to turn that tree. You have to put ropes on it and keep adjusting the stake day after day after day to really even make a dent. It's the same here. Your mind has been rooted in your habitual thinking for, you know, however old you are minus, you know, eight years because your, 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 your personality, your subconscious mind, all of that gets formed between five and eight. So the reason unbroken mental discipline is key is because it's like, we're trying to push a rope uphill right now, but it will be done. It gets to be done. Here's the key where you get to be honest with yourself because God sees you. I may not see you. The whole momentum crew won't see you, but God sees you. If you make a false start, or even if you go on well for two to three days, and then for any reason you fall off the diet, 
the thing to do is to drop the scheme altogether for several days and start again afresh. There must be no jumping on and off as it were. So you can't be like rolling in negativity on Monday and then Tuesday you had a good day and Wednesday, no, you start all over. Yes, Annie, to thine own self be true. God sees you. This is so key. If you make a wrong move, you fall off. He says, Wusa, gather yourself up. Maybe take a day or two to reset. Maybe reflect on what what was it that you you do you know you were like dwelling on that you couldn't snap out of it, and then come again. Okay. There must be no jumping on and off, as it were. You remember that Rip Van Winkle in the play would take a solemn vow of teetotalism and then promptly accept a drink from the first neighbor who offered him one saying calmly, I won't count this one. <laughs> well, on the seven day mental diet, this sort of thing simply will not do. You must positively count every lap. So get your journal with you, make a note. If you, if you fall off, maybe make a note of what was the topic, what was the thing, who was the person, whatever. Be introspective in terms of what caused me to dwell on this thing. And like I was in this loop, I couldn't get out of it. You must positively count every lapse and whether you do or not, nature will, right? Basically God sees you. Where there is a lapse, you must go off the diet altogether and then restart. Now in order if possible, to forestall difficulties, I will consider them in a little detail. First of all, what do I mean by negative thinking? Well, a negative thought is any thought of failure, disappointment, or trouble. So you had plans with a girlfriend to meet up, and it's not good time, Tina. You had plans with a girlfriend to go meet up uh, at the breakers for lunch. And the lunch was 1230. You use your special connections because you're connected like that. Um, let me stop share for a second so I can see you guys. Um, you used your special connections because you used to work in hospitality. So you got the good seat for 1230. And at 1215... Meanwhile, you're in the parking lot parking. She sends you a text and says, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm not, I'm not feeling good. I just feel really woozy and I just can't hardly even stand up. I'm, I'm, I apologize. And the, and the text ends. And you, steaming, swirling like a gig, that's the top for you who are not from Jamaica. <laughs> you start spinning like a gig out of control. Like, oh my God, I can't believe it. You know, I use my special privileges. I was going to save that ask for, you know, something that I needed, but I knew she was feeling, you know, like she needed some time, girlfriend time. And I use my favor. And now, and that makes me look bad. Now I look stupid. Now I can't walk up in the breakers. And that's you spiraling, dwelling, as opposed to, Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need anything? Do you need me to come there? Do you need me to get you soup? Do you want me to send so-and-so over to help you with anything later? Let me know because if you're dizzy, don't, don't, um, don't try to stand up too much because I know you live in a two story and I would hate for you to fall off the stairs. If your go-to was, I can't believe me, right? Me, me, me. I did all this. I did the, as opposed to the concern for, well, who's going to miss, you know, the good, good lunch at the breakers. Even if she tempts you, because you're, you're, you're mad because you felt like, well, she could have picked up the phone and, and told me to my face, like a real woman. She just sent over a measly text. There you go. You're still, you're dwelling Oh my gosh, I hope you're okay. Let me know if you need anything. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and, and grab the table and eat. I have some work I can do anyway. So I'll call you later when I'm leaving and checking on you. Okay, bye. 
even if you had a, you, you right, you're disappointed, you're sad, but you're not dwelling. You're not picking up the phone now and saying, girl, you're not going to believe this. You know that dress that I had Jacqueline make for me just for this lunch? Honey, it's just me and the waiter because she's not even. That's you dwelling. Do you guys get the difference? Do you, do you understand? So it, it's, he's not saying like a negative thought won't pop up, but it's whether you take that negative thought and project it on your movie screen and you get your big bowl of butter popcorn and you're just there watching that movie like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, oh my God. And you're like in it like a good movie because you can't control the thoughts that come. It's what we do with the thoughts, right? It's when the devil was trying to tempt Jesus and he's like, oh, bow down and I will look, look, look yonder. All of it could be yours. Jesus couldn't control that the devil came and tried to tempt him, but he just was like, uh, be gone. He didn't sit there and dwell. And I'm like, gosh, I can't believe it. I'm the Messiah. What are they going to think that somebody would even think to try and tempt me? That's going to look bad for me in the streets. They're going to be like, oh, he must be a weak fence because if the devil had a thought that he could tempt him, maybe he ain't all that. That's dwelling. Get thee behind me, Satan. Done moving on. You're good. You're still on the mental diet. Okay. Important that you understand that. So let's read on, see what else he's got for us before I wrap us. We've got eight minutes, eight minutes. Okay. All right. So first of all, what do I mean by negative thinking? Well, a negative thought is any thought of failure, disappointment, or trouble, any thought of criticism or spite or jealousy or condemnation of others. Hello, somebody. I can't believe she had the nerve to send a text. Like I would never send a text, like knowing that that was a big deal. Like who gets to have free lunch at the breaker? She should, that's condemnation of others. Or self-condemnation, right? It's like, I'm so stupid. Like, I should have never trusted her. She's a, such a flake. She's always wishy-washy. Like, and now, and I'm a fool. I just, I, I'm not a good judge of character. I just let people stomp all over me like I'm a, door, a doormat. You know, that's why I don't really have any good friends. That's self-condemnation. Any thought of sickness or accident, in short, any kind of limitation or pessimistic thinking, any thought that is not positive and constructive in character, whether it concerns you, yourself, or anyone else is a negative thought. Do not bother too much about the question of classification. However, in practice, you will never have any trouble in knowing whether a given thought is positive or negative. Even if your brain tries to deceive you, your heart will whisper the truth. Second, you must be quite clear that what this scheme calls for is that you shall not entertain or dwell. I just went through this. Note this carefully. It is not the thoughts that come to you that matter but only such of them as you choose to entertain and dwell. It doesn't matter what thoughts may come to you or, or come to you provided you do not entertain them. It is the entertaining or dwelling upon them that matters. You are going to have a showing Vivian and the client uh, didn't even call. Didn't even call. You're at the open house and waiting and waiting. The other agents there with the lockbox open, N nothing. Are you seething and steaming and pissed off and just like, oh, I'm never going to work with this client again? Or are you like, oh my, let me call like, um, hey, Lisa Kennedy, are you okay? I'm just so concerned. I'm here at the open house, but I haven't seen you. I'm going to wait for five more minutes. I'm going to keep trying you. Please let me know that you're okay and, and mean it. 
<laughs> and mean it. Remember, nature sees you. God's watching. And, and have more concern that she's okay than the disappointment uh, and the the annoyance of the embarrassment that this agent is looking at you like, what kind of crazy clients are you you bring in um, that they don't even show up? So, of course, many thoughts will come to you all day long. Some of them will just drift into your mind of their own accord, and others will come to you um, will come to you out of the race mind. Other negative thoughts that will be given to you by other people, either in conversation or by their conduct or you will hear disagreeable news, perhaps by letter or telephone, or you will see crimes and disasters announced in the newspaper headings. These things, however, do not matter as long as you do not entertain them. So if you're, if you're having dinner and you pass by your TV room and you hear something on the news, okay, but you're not entertaining. You're not like, I can't believe it. Like, what is this country coming to? Like, I mean, how many more um, challenges do we have to face? Right now, now you're in a negative spiral. Now you got to stop. Now you got to stop the, the the challenge. You got to woo saw and come again and start start afresh. That's why I'd say it's hard because you'll have people. You know, you'll have a husband or a wife who's not on this diet with you. I encourage you to share the book with them and and try to do it together. Not try, do it together. So then you have to hold the line even more if you live with someone and, and they're negative Nancy, or as uh, Bonita likes to say, if they're a girl, they're like petulant Polly. You, you Then you have to hold the line even more. So if you, if you hear it, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, the newspaper's on the breakfast table, whatever, it's there, but you're not entertaining it. Hashtag somebody, do not entertain them. In fact, it is these very things that provide the discipline that is going to transform you during this epic making week. Uh, the thing to do is direct the thing to do is direct the neg the negative thoughts directly the negative thoughts the thought present itself, turn it out. That was a tongue twister. Turn away from the newspaper. Turn out the thought of the unkind letter or stupid remark or whatnot. When the negative thoughts float into your mind, immediately turn it out and think of it as think of something else. Best of all, think of God as God explained in the golden key. A perfect analogy is furnished by the case of a man who is sitting by an open fire when a red hot cinder flies out and falls on his sleeve. If he knocks the cinder off at once without a moment's delay to think about it, no harm is done. But if he allows it to rest on him for a single moment under any pretense that mischief is done and it will be troublesome tasks to repair the sleeve. So it is with this, it is with a ne negative thought. Now, what of those negative thoughts and conditions, which is impossible to avoid at the point where you are today? What of the ordinary troubles that you will have to meet in the office or at home? The answer is, that such things will not affect your diet provided you do not accept them by fearing them, by believing them, by being indignant or sad about them, or by giving them any power at all. Any negative condition that duty compels you to handle will not affect your diet. Go to the office or meet the, the cares of the home without allowing them to affect you. None of these things move me. One of my favorite scripture from Paul, where he was talking about he was shipwrecked and he was bitten by a snake. He was in prison. They whipped him. They beat him. None of these things move me and all will be well. Suppose that you are lunching with a friend who talks negatively. Do not try to shut him up or otherwise snub him. Let him talk, but do not accept what he says and your diet will not be affected. Suppose that on coming home, you were greeted with a lot of negative conversation. Do not preach a sermon, but simply do not accept it. It is your mental consent, remember, that constitutes your diet. Suppose you witness an accident or an act of injustice, let's say, instead of reacting by accepting the appearance and responding with pity or indignation, refuse to accept the appearance of its face value. Do anything that you can to right matters, give it the right thought and let it go at that. You will still be on your diet. 
Of course, it will be very helpful if you can take steps to avoid meeting during the week anyone who seems particularly likely to arouse the devil in you. People who get on your nerves, rub you the wrong way, or bore you are better avoided while you are on the diet. But if it's not possible to avoid them, then you must take a little extra discipline. That's all. Right? Suppose you have a particularly trying ordeal before you next week. Well, if you have enough spiritual understanding, you will know how to meet that in the spiritual way. But for our present purpose, I think I would wait and start the diet as soon as the ordeal is over. As I said before, do not take up the diet lightly, but think it over well first. And here and death. The lesson. Was that good? Let me catch these comments before we go. Yes. So exactly. Cancel it quick. Let it go. Cancel, 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 cancel. Next. <laughs> yeah. Life is happening now. Oh my gosh. Have a blessed and exciting day. Same to you, my love. Okay. So be on the lookout for the good. Yes. The silver lining. Find the good find the good. Remember I gave you that example. If you live with somebody and they always keep the toilet seat up and that's like one of your biggest pet peeve, try to find the good. So you know what? Well, at least he's able-bodied. He can see he has two legs. He's not paralyzed, not in a wheelchair. He can stand and pee. So, so there's that. So that's good. Find the good. This is this. Remember he said, it's going to be a challenge. Okay. Exactly. Perfect. Right. And, and, and the more that we do this, right, this is how we're going to be changed and transformed. Love it. Oh, Jacqueline, that warms my heart. Fantastic. Yeah. Order the books for them. This, the, everybody needs to, everybody gets to, let me reframe my languaging. Everybody gets to have this brilliant life where you become unbothered. This is why unbothered is my biggest hashtag because you get to just know that, you know what? The battle is the Lord's. I'm not going to take on fights that don't concern me. My role, my responsibility is to see purpose, potential, and just love on everyone and do the best that I can and do no harm. And that's how I move through this world. Yes. Don't entertain. Don't dwell. It'll come. The devil tempted Jesus. So it's going to come. You woosah, you cancel, you shrug it off. Satan, get behind me. I'm moving on. I know I'm here for a better life. And I, that's what my focus is on. Oh, did you see the news today? You know, I didn't. I've just been so focused getting my education right. I haven't even had time to focus. And you keep it going. Listen, I got to go do my journaling right now. Catch you later. Right? Yes. Do not entertain them. They will come. They will come. Absolutely. Yes, Jacqueline. I'm glad you're loving this. Absolutely sure with Warren and your daughter. This is awesome, Annie. And if we can spread the news, invite more people to, especially this week that we're going through this book, because, you know, again, you start anytime. So if somebody comes tomorrow, they can start when they start, right? <laughs> Find the good. Yes, she gets to get this book. She gets to have this learning. Yes, let go and let God. Hello, Brenda Warren, the solutionist in the house. Look at Arvis. Listen, Arvis was like, look, I'm going to go be awesome over on YouTube. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. So I'm going to wrap us, but as I always like to wrap the show, this and more, this and more is what you get when you come into the Brand Accelerator program with me. I am going to be talking about this until the codes are done at AppSumo because if you're not in the accelerator program and you're like, what is the accelerator program? What's faith talking about? Do yourself a favor. Just comment below in the comments right now, type the word that you see on the screen accelerator. You will get in your Facebook messenger information about the program. It is an online and accountability program. Lifetime, 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 hashtag faith for life. As long as I breathe and you breathe, you're in the program with me right now. We're in the midst of our March Madness challenge. We're having the best time. Oh my God, guys, you're going to, you're going to, there's going to be one that you're going to be like, is faith out of her mind with this challenge? But it's so good. So many great things are happening. If you like this level of support and accountability, you like this idea of us coming together and helping you step into your greatness, because as I said, this is my purpose, my path, my passion, then I want you to get in with me, get into the accelerator program, hashtag, not hashtag, cancel that. Just comment accelerator if you're not already in and get in, it's only $97. It's a one-time pay. You will be so grateful that you did. 
So I will. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we're going to talk about it till we're blue in the face, in the skin. That's right, Jacqueline. We're going to talk about this until we are blue because this is such a missed opportunity for people who don't get in. $97 for life. Like this doesn't exist anywhere else. Yes, Angel has. I see Angel saying she's like hashtag for life. Totally, totally worth it. Oh my gosh, this is great. Yes, woo child. <laughs> but you see, right? But that's how we grow. How does a butterfly become a butterfly? Butterfly first is in a cocoon of a caterpillar, right? Caterpillar, and then when you, if you see a butterfly coming out, it's not like a, ah, now I'm a butterfly. It's a push and a tug and a tear, right? The butterfly has to work, has to go through some things to get out of that cocoon to then be the glorious, magnificent, wonderful monarch or whatever type. This is what we're doing in the accelerated program. We're launching butterflies. And you, you can't get, if somebody were to say, oh, I'm gonna just do it. No, there's a process to it. So yes, get into the accelerated program. I know this is my gifting. This is my gifting because this is what I know. I serve a God of multiplication. So I don't do addition. Oh, you get this and this and that. No, you get this and this, which equals a million. This is how we roll. This is how we roll. This is how God has blessed my life infinitely. Yes. And Bonita, wait, more coming. Absolutely. Faith for life. I'm going to do a t-shirt on that. Hashtag faith for life. <laughs> All facts cosign. <laughs> You guys crack me up. <laughs> oh my gosh. And see, this is what I love. The nudge was good. The nudge was good. So I, I, I'm grateful to you. Yes, we are launching butterflies. Yes, Khadija. Khadija going to come through in her awesomeness in June. She'll be a full-fledged butterfly. <laughs> I love it. Vivian, get in the accelerator, honey. I'm calling you forward. I'm just going to call you forward, my love. Get in the accelerator. Yes. Hashtag we're launching butterflies. All right, guys. I love you all so much. Be well. If you're not in the accelerator, stop circling the drain. Get off the sideline. Get in the game. You don't want to be there. It's like, oh, I remember when it was, it was 97 and now I can't even get in because it's closed down and they've moved on. The door... Listen, you know, when you're in London and you're getting on the train and they're like, mind the gap, right? Mind the gap. And what? The doors are closing. The doors are closing. Get your bag, your hand, your feet, your whatever. The doors are closing. Get on the train, Vivian. Whoever else is on, Annie, who's new, you will thank me. I, it, it's guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right, guys. I love you so much. I'm going to get out of here. I am off to, well, actually tomorrow, let me just do a little like programming note. Uh, I have an appointment to get my vaccination two hours from here. We're like, take it where we can get it. So uh, I will not be live with the show tomorrow, but fret not watch all the replays. I may come on later and do a bonus at a different time, just so we can get the reading going. Let me see what's happening, but I must prioritize. I get to prioritize my health and my sanity and my safety so I can be out into the world. <laughs> uh, so I get to do that tomorrow. So just stand by for updates. But if I, I'm likely not, I think the, the appointment was confirmed. So I'm likely not, but I will see about coming back on at a later uh, time just so we can get our reading in together. All right. Love you guys so much. Take care. Be well. Bye. I'm not